So looking at this design, the reason that you can't see the panel that's on the inside, if I click on this, which is the shape of the stone that has a fill, if we look right up here, you'll see where it says closed curve, and this is actually checked because it's a closed curve. If I hit V to go to wireframe and click on this one, it's a slightly different um, icon here, which asks you to join the curve. This shows that there's actually an open portion of the curve, and it's kind of hard to tell where that is just by looking at it because you can see the squares um, that make up the nodes, and you can't really tell that down here they're not closed unless you zoom in. So if you zoom in and change it to your shape tool instead, then you'll see arrows as opposed to the squares. So if I come up here, I guess we didn't really need to zoom in, but if we look with the shape tool, your the rest of your nodes are squares, whereas these are arrows. If you've got arrows pointing in two opposite directions, what that's signifying is the way that the curve is running. And so this one, if I pulled it out, it's showing that the curve is running in this direction. If you're cutting it on a cutter, that's the direction it would cut. And it would get to right down to here, to this one. And then you've got the secondary line down here, which is running in this direction. So it's going from here to there. And the arrows are your endpoints or beginning points. But what that's signifying is that there is a break there, okay? And so if you select both of those, you can do what's called a join. Just come up here and hit join, or J on the keyboard, and then you'll notice how it switches to a square instead of the triangle. If we do the same thing on this side, if we hit join, then it will join those together, and you'll be left with one arrow, which is good. The single arrow means that it's still telling you which direction the curve is going, and this is your start node. So when a cutter starts or stops, it's going to start and stop at this node, and it's going to go in this direction. So it's going to go from here, up, around, back down, and then back down to where it started. But now that we've done that, you'll notice up here that it shows the closed curve. Um, so if we click that button, it'll pull that apart, it'll open it up. So now it's an open curve, but if we click it again, and then it's going to close it. The reason we didn't click that to begin with, if I go ahead and undo back to where we were to begin with, where we had these open and those open, if all we did was select it and hit the close curve button, it's not necessarily going to close it the way that we expect it to close. So it's, it's still, as I click that, still showing that it's got an open curve. And the reason for that is because when it closed it automatically, what it did was it closed this line back to where it started, but then it left that secondary uh, path, and that path is still open. If we broke those apart and selected this one by itself, it would show that as being closed. But because of the way that it auto-closed, it joined those two together as opposed to joining the existing line. So just using this tool isn't the best way of going about it. Manually joining it is um, a good way of doing it. So I'm not sure how you created this cross line to begin with, but my guess is that maybe you had a line there and then you trimmed, possibly using the virtual segment delete tool. If you are using virtual segment delete to do that, just Virtual segment deleting will not automatically close these in. So what you have to do when you're done virtual segment deleting is hold shift. That'll change to a join tool. Then you can drag a box around those nodes that are still open, and then it will automatically close those in. If that happens, it will be able to fill in with a color, and then it will uh, show through the way that you want it to. And then when you come over and build a panel, you can say double line, single line, whatever, but you want to uncheck the recreate panel button and hit apply and that way it will follow that contour. If we had this checked it would just create a box. So and that's why we want to uncheck that and then it will create a panel for us. Now I'm not exactly sure like I said how you created that but one way that you could do it is if you took the contour tool and contoured inward and then you go and break that apart 
if you use the shape tool, you can grab these bottom nodes and just pull them up to where you want it to be. That's not breaking anything apart. That's not trimming or anything. So it stays as a closed object. So then you can just grab that by itself and hit apply. Now, when I was dragging um, upward, I was, I started dragging upward and then I held control so that it stays in line, snaps, and that way it doesn't shift over to the right or left at all. Holding control will keep it in line. So you can do that, or you can use your arrow keys, up, down, arrow keys, and it would do the same thing. Even though it's black right now, that doesn't really matter because as soon as you come over and build your panel, it's gonna color it the way that you want it. One other useful tool, if we were to revert back to the original, the way that you had it to begin with, so I'll just go to file and say revert, Click OK, and it'll go back to how it was before. If we wanted to, we can select everything. Just double click the pick tool that selects everything. You can see the outline here that there is an object selected. But if we click on this button, Find Open Shapes, then what that does is it will actually change the outline color of your shape to red if it's an open shape. And then it will give you um, different endpoints. So if we zoom in here, you'll see that it's got a different endpoint. Um, where it's broken, where it's opened. So by clicking on our shape tool, if we move this away from that one, you'll notice that the endpoints um, have this little crosshair on it so that you can understand. Endpoints are chosen up here, your arrowheads is what they're called. Um, so that's what it's doing is it's just changing to a different arrowhead as opposed to the arrow itself. And then one other option, as I mentioned before, you can select them and hit J, or you can use the virtual segment delete if they're exactly over, over each other. But you can also just manually grab them. So if I grab this and put it over the top of this one, as soon as I get it right over the top of this one, the cursor icon changes to a little pointing black arrow underneath it. And then when I let go, it will join those together. So you can do the same thing for this as well if you wanted to move it away from it and then move it back and as soon as you get it back then it would join it together so there's various ways of closing and doing that sort of stuff but that's an option the last option for joining and closing things would uh, that i would suggest is to use the join curves docker which will open up over here on the side so if we go to join curves which is this one and um, what it does is it lets you choose how you want those things to join and then um, whether you would if there's larger gaps this is how it's choosing to fill those gaps in you don't really have gaps so as soon as we just hit apply what it will do is it'll close those for us as well so that's uh, an even faster way to close all of those um, in this case that's still got a red outline because I had used find open shapes but as, again as soon as I go back to my panels and reapply it'll get rid of that red outline as well.